Hey, Project fam, some of you might spend the weekend hanging out with friends. Project nerds spend the weekends working on projects. This weekend, I enlisted the help of Boogeyman FPV. Normally, you find him tearing up the streets in his one wheel. He has a couple of awesome videos on YouTube. Check it out. Please show him some love. Maybe he'll post some more videos. Today, the Boogeyman is going to show us his 10-minute version on how to change oil without even getting underneath the car. Like, how do you do that? So this yellow thing is called a dipstick. Yes. <laughs> I can see the oil. Yeah. And you should start seeing it through there. Nice. Oh, uh, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. This, you got all the goodies. What, what is this thing up here? <laughs> it's my dash cam. A dash cam. Hey, Project Fam. Welcome to another fun episode. So now, this is gonna be a little different. I've done a lot of the outdoor planting today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna focus a little bit more on an odd oil change. So what I have is, I have... The Boogeyman. Say what's up, Boogeyman. What's up, Boogeyman? All right, so he's going to show us uh, a different way of changing the oil. In a traditional car, what you do to change the oil is you go underneath the car, you let all the oil out, you unscrew the filter. That's what we used to do. But for this car, it's a little different. So what kind of car is it? Q3, um, premium edition, 2016. So basically too lazy to get under the car. Figured we change it out through the top. Q3, that means Audi. <laughs> baby Audi. Baby Audi. That's how we get it right, okay. All right, so what do we have over here? All right, so this is just a setup of all the stuff that you're gonna need to do this oil change. You're gonna need some oil. You only need about 4.8 quarts in case of this car, but you got two on hand just in case there's any accidents. Why not use just regular average oil? Why go for this special blend right here? Well, if you care about your cars, you Ooh. need oil. That's just my opinion about, you know. And then also, when we talk about filters, right? So what people don't realize with these filters is that the quality of the filter also matters as well. If you get a cheap filter versus one of these, you'll see that there's a difference in the weight of the filters. That difference is down to the number of pleats. More pleats, more filtration, better quality and better engine life. You start to use the lighter, cheaper filters. They'll work initially with the thicker oils, but then they don't have enough material to kind of do the filtration job you need over time. All right, so, so spend the money. So where are the pleats in this filter? Pleats are all on the inside. If we were to cut this open, it's just folded paper downside. And like I said, I don't have the old one, the um, an old filter to show you, but um, just number of pleats inside. And when you start using something like Liquid Molly, which is a little bit of a thinner viscosity synthetic, what you want is it to kind of be able to flow through and actually have the filtration of the pleats do the work. And y'all thought I was a project nerd. Go ahead, Boogeyman, drop the knowledge. So that's why you want a quality filter. All right, gloves. And I don't have rags here, but rags are nearby. Mm -hmm. Toolbox, just in case. We probably don't need it because literally we're just going through the top. Mm -hmm. And then we have our Ooh. fluid evacuator. Now, I love this thing. This thing is what makes this whole process worth it. Wow. Right. So um, Amazon, I can't remember where I got it, but you can look it up, you can find them anywhere. Literally, you pump and you'll see it in action. It sucks the oil out through the top and you can literally get everything down to the bottom of the oil pan. It's like hooking a vacuum cleaner up to the engine and just sucking out all the oil. As far as pumping the oil out, can you do this on any car or it has to be a certain type of car to pull the oil out through the top? I think any car that has a dipstick. How many times today will you hear the word dipstick? Mm -hmm. You can go through the dipstick and get it if the dipstick is on the top. If you've got a car like my other car, you probably can't do it so much because it's kind of at a funky angle. We're gonna we're gonna cut to the other car. What what other car? The other car. The other car. There All we right. Go. Yeah, we'll take a look at that before we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right. So no, if you've got something where like the dipstick on the top here, we'll, we'll show you right here. Access super easy. Right to the top, straight shot down. You just suck it all out. So this yellow thing is called a dipstick. Yes. <laughs> do I have to cut that out? <laughs> Dang it! I was trying to do this uncut. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. You want to remove your oil fill cap as well as your dipstick, but you're going to put the evacuator inside the dipstick tube. Very important. You want to put the evacuator inside the dipstick tube. After you insert the evacuator tube as far down as it can go, now you want to pressurize the system. So you want to pump it up and keep pumping until you start to see some of the oil flow in the tube. There you go. It starts to like just run on its own for a minute. Okay. And you can tell. And then you'll see it clear up here. And then you pump it again and it'll get the, it'll get the rest. Whoa. But you do want to run the car a few minutes before just to warm it up. Warm it up. Yeah. And you can see it's starting to... Out. 
So the alternative, right? Mm -hmm. Jack the car up, get under, reach the drain plug. So you still have a traditional drain plug in this yep, car? Yeah, I still do. Okay. You know, so I keep this one just in case, but I didn't feel like dealing with, with this one. Literally, you get under there, pop it, let it drain out, and then put it back up, and then you fill from the top. This just lets me without all of that mess. So. As far as removing as much of the dirty oil as possible, is this method efficient? Or oh, you probably 90, get like 90% of the oil out? 90, 95% of the oil. Okay, that's Like good. literally, it's touching the very bottom of where the dipstick ends, right? So you get, you, what's nice about this, you could do it on an incline. Right. And still get most of the oil, whereas as you know, with most oil changes, you want to be level as you get under the car if you want to drain everything, so. Now, if your oil filter was underneath the car, you would still have to jack it up. But in this case, it's right yeah. here. Yeah, that, that, so, that saves a lot right there. Yeah, so this method makes a whole lot of sense. And you can see how, how much we've gotten so far. Mm-hmm. So. But the, the key is, if you have your oil filter underneath the car, yeah. underneath, you still have you to still jack, it jack it up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the fact that it's on top with this engine, that's that's it. That's it. Someone's worth it to buy this car. <laughs> just to do just, that. Just to have it, cause to, to eliminate this three hundred dollars. How much? How much? So you see that? Now, it, like you, like when you sip a straw, mm -hmm. and you start getting to the bottom of the can, it's vibrant or dry because it's at the bottom now. Okay, it's actually a little warm. Yep, so I'm gonna add a little more. But you can see, look at that, man. I mean, so five point three liters. So yep. what was the price of this? Amazon, maybe 50, 60 bucks. Compared to the oil change of how much? The oil change would definitely be like probably north of a hundred bucks. For this car, you go into the dealer and then they've got it for whatever time they charge your labor because at the time it was still under their warranty. Labor is the evil of all. Yes. And and he's not just putting in average oil, he's putting in a really good quality oil. Okay. You don't know, sometimes I don't even know what, what the dealership you does. Take two, you take two of those now? Is that two? Of, no, no, this uses one. One of them, okay. Yeah, mine uses two. But, um, that uses two of these? Yeah. Well, that's a machine. <laughs> that's a machine. That's a it needs to be well lubed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so th this right here is kind of like, you know, depending on how much it bothers you that there might be a tiny bit mm -hmm. left. Patience. Going. Otherwise, I'm like, time. I would generally say we're, we're good because that's how much came out. So her car takes about five liters. This is about 5.3 to the top. So the rest is likely what's been burned off in the course of driving since the last oil change because I haven't put any in their car since. Okay. What's, what's going on now? What are you doing? I'm just making sure that it doesn't drip down on me so whatever's left in here in the tube, I just wanted to like fall into the um, okay. container. So it be a little bit of work because these are supposed to be hand tight, but I go more than hand tight. Yep, so now I need my wrench. That's why I got this. Okay. So there's my big wrench. So not even an oil filter wrench, just a large channel lock is good. Yeah, because because good. That's all you just a little bit. Yeah, and like if I if I stick to the hand tight rule, then this shouldn't have been an issue. But I don't trust hand tight. Yeah, I don't trust it. There, there you go. go. Nice. So the other thing too, when you're doing oil change, you want to keep that in because it's draining at the same time. Mm. So you take it off first. You'll probably have everything splash back up in case anybody's interested. Boom. Okay, nice. Right? Okay. And that's where we took it from. Good. Yeah. Is there an O-ring on this filter? Yep, there is yep. an O-ring. So you give that a little lube also? Yep. And then, um, actually. So what are you doing now? You're comparing the old filter to the new filter to make sure that there's nothing else from the old filter that needs to go on a new filter, just in case. Yep. And there's nothing extra. Good. All right, for those who aren't sure. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. I was actually checking out the shoes, if you really want to know. It's like, look at the superhero shoes. That's funny. <laughs> No, it's just to kind of help make sure that the integrity of the seal is there once you screw things down. I guess so. if you screw it on while the rubber has no lube, it might rip it as might. you're putting it on. It might, it okay. might, you know. So this is just to kind of make sure you don't have those issues. Nice. To go hand tight and then a little more work. Just about hand tight. Like not if I can still tight. turn it, it's not hand tight. <laughs> okay. 
So that is, that's, ah, hand, that's hand tight, hand tight. And then I'll probably just do a quarter to a quarter turn. Boom. That's good. All right, so your filter's changed. Your oil has been emptied. If you were doing a traditional change, you would drain from the bottom, drag the pan up, put the drain plug back in, take the filter off. But now we're just gonna load up through the top. So the thing about this dipstick, and why do you need a dipstick, right? So if you look at the end of a dipstick for, you know, just general knowledge, mm -hmm. there's an area between max and min typically that you want your oil to kind of live in. Okay. To know that you've got enough for your engine. So I'm gonna put the dipstick back in for now. Since we're changing oil right now, we're gonna try and fill it up to max. That's the goal. Yep. Okay. And so we know that roughly 4.85 liters is what this particular engine takes. If you didn't know how much oil your engine takes, where can you find that information? The internet. Just go to the internet. Internet. Okay. You know, and if you ask for, you know, the meaning of life, it's typically the second entry, how much oil should you put in your car? Okay. So, no. The internet will have everything. <laughs> Dealer's <laughs> license. He said meaning of life, and I'm thinking, what? <laughs> do I need to go do a search for the meaning of life? <laughs> you can take a funnel. Always use a funnel. Drop that in, and I agree. It's better <laughs> if you do use that, because I've tried this it before. It doesn't work. And it's a, it's, a, it's a mess waiting to happen. And these are cheap. So if don't, you don't, don't use that. a funnel, you'll get oil on the side of the engine. It'll drip down. It'll start smoking. It might even start dripping from underneath. So just use a funnel and take your time. Yeah, and the thing to keep in mind too, right? You've saved a ton of money versus going to a dealer. So you can get high quality oil. You can get a high quality filter. Mm -hmm. Funnels are cheap, mm -hmm. right? right? And you still come out ahead versus going into your dealer. So once again, like I said, pretty much this entire container goes in here. So I'm going to just go liberally until we're about four and a half and then we'll start checking the dipstick. So I can feel this getting lighter, but mm -hmm. this has like a neat gauge on the side here. So it started up here, which was the five liter mark. Mm -hmm. We're down here right now. And so each mark right here is about a liter. So we've got what? Two left, so we put in about three so far. So like I said, we're gonna go to about four and a half and then start checking the dipstick. So if this oil is so good, how come the automobile manufacturers don't sell that oil with the car? I don't know, that's a really good question. <laughs> My understanding from reviews, from talking to independent um, repair shops, this is what they have in drums, mm. you know? So it's it's one thing when you go in and you see like a big old, <laughs> and it says liquid molly, it's like, okay. Wow, that's deep. Okay, you know? I didn't know that. So you don't want to wipe anything off until you can get there and look. So tell me what you see, just in case if it's too hard. To All right, play. so if we're looking at the line marks right here, the very bottom one is the minimum, mm -hmm. that little notched area is where you want to be, right. and that's max. So right. we are just below the minimum. Okay, so. Where it's wet. Okay. Right, you can see the difference. That's so we dry. still need some more oil? We need more oil. Okay. And that's why it's good to have extra, just in case, and then. I know, he had it in his hand and he didn't say the word dipstick. Oh, this is going crazy. More, more times than not, your car, all cars are gonna burn oil to a degree or consume oil, if you will. So it doesn't go to waste. Whatever's extra is left over there right here, you can periodically top off your oil in between oil changes. Another dipstick check, just so we can see if there's a difference here. Yeah. You can see it's right in the middle. So it's right in the middle between min and, and max. max, right? Good. So at that point, you're done with your oil change. In terms of refilling, you just need to replace all the parts. So you don't want to try and top it off to max? I don't think it really makes a difference in this case. I mean, for me, yeah, why not? We're here, right? Hey, don't, don't let me. <laughs> I'm just asking a question because someone might want to know. All right, so the, you, you bring up a good point, right? In the case where it's like right at the edge of max, you can probably go to the end of it. Mm -hmm. I think generally speaking, I know certainly in um, that car, if you go over the fill mark, you start getting like aeration of the oil. Mm -hmm. And um, my understanding is that's bad. I haven't done it. I don't have the guts to try it. So that probably took 10 minutes, if that much. Uh, very efficient way to change your oil. And like I said, if your oil filter is on top of the engine, 
uh, it just it just makes so much more sense to to do it the, using this method. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to reset the what is it called? I the, reset the service interval. The service interval. All right. Entirely right. So up here, mm -hmm. focus right over under car. We've got servicing and checks. Service interval oil change due. Right. So we know we just went through it. Reset oil change interval. Do you want to? Yes. It is now a reset. Ding, yeah. ding, 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 ding. And that's it. Yep. So, you know, we didn't even need to use a separate tool. But the thing that you want to keep in mind is that it, whatever schedule you're on, you have to find a way to remember that. So I normally do my oil changes every 5,000 miles. It's an easy enough increment for me to remember, especially since we're using synthetic. So when this comes on again, and I know I'm not 5,000, I can just go through the menu over here and kind of do it that way. Okay. Nice. I ain't gonna lie, this, you got all the goodies. What, what is this thing up here? <laughs> it's my dash cam. A dash cam. And my, my, my rear cam, so. And a rear cam. Yeah. Yeah. Auto record from the time you turn the car on, and it just kind of keeps cycling over and storing it onto a micro um, SD card. Mm -mm -mm. I think that's a whole different video. All right. <laughs> all right, so that completes our oil change. Uh, oil change and filter has been done and just reset to the next oil change interval, we're all done. So after the oil change is done, what do you do with this used oil? All right, so used oil. You've got an empty container now that you put everything with the fresh oil into the car. You can literally take the used oil, dump it back into these containers, and most of your nearby auto parts stores will recycle oil, or you can go to an Indian and ask them if they'll take used oil, but you take it neatly back in these, and they'll take care of it for you. Thank you. You said take it to an independent person? An independent garage, or you can go to an advanced auto or any auto parts store. A lot of times they're able to kind of handle that. Hey, Project Fam, thank you so much for your support. And don't forget to check out Boogeyman FPV. Check out his channel. All right, until next time.